We are team number four and problem number nine. I am Maria Jose. Rafael. Absalon. And we're gonna talk, talk about the problem. Our problem is the problem number nine. So our function is f of x equals x cubic minus x over x. So the first step is to simplify everything. And we have to factorize one x. So we obtain x squared minus one multiplying x. So we can simplify this x with this one. And then we obtain x squared minus one. And we know that a uh, uh, rational function uh, can be, its denominator can be, uh, have to be different to zero. So we know that x is different to zero, and so the domain is x uh, belongs to all the real numbers except zero. Then we have to obtain the x and y intercept. For the x intercept, we uh, equal all the function to zero, and then we have to isolate the, the x. So we pass this minus one uh, to the other side positive, and for eliminate this square, we have to to put a square root. So it's x is equal to square root of, of one, and we know that when we have our square root, the result is, we have two results, one positive and one negative. So x is equal plus minus one, and the points are a, which is one comma comma zero, and the other point is b, which is minus one comma zero, and for the y-intercept. We have to first we, we we simplify again the the function and we, and we obtain this x squared minus one. So we have to to make uh, uh, f of zero. So we we substitute the the zero in the x and zero squared is equals zero. So zero minus one is equal to minus one. So we have the our point is zero comma minus one is the y intercept. To find the symmetry for this function, we have to uh, evaluate in the function f minus x, and we get minus x cubed plus x over minus x, and that is not equal to the original function, so it's not even function. And now we have to we have to take out the minus and evaluate in the function, and then we get minus x a cube plus x over minus x. And since it's equal to the it's equal to the previous function, it's an asymmetry. And now we have to find the vertical asymptote, and then we evaluate x in zero, x equals to zero. So the limit of x equal to zero, and then we simplify. And then we get x squared minus one. And then substitute the limit, the zero in the x, and we get minus one first. And then in the second, we have to evaluate the limit in x minus one from the left. And we simplify, and we substitute, and we get zero, ne negative zero. And then we substitute in the x from the right, and we simplify, and we and substitute, and we get x, uh, um, x equals to zero positive, and we have a gap in the point zero comma minus one. Now the vertical asymptote, we have to evaluate in x, in a x to infinity from the right and x to infinity from the left. And we simplify, first we simplify, and we get x squared minus one. And then we substitute infinity minus one and we get positive infinity. 
and then we evaluate the limit of x from the left, we simplify, and we get x squared minus 1, and then we substitute in the limit, and we get uh, a negative infinite, and that is why we have no horizontal asymptote. Okay, so for point f, we have to find the first derivative, and we're going to use our simplified equation. So now we're going to get that f is equal, if the first derivative of x is going to be equal to 2x, and for that we're going to use our, I, for our id test, we're going to equal 2x, that is our derivative to 0, and we're going to substitute the values from the left and right of 0, and we're going to get that this is going to be negative, so it's going to be downwards, and then this is going to be positive, so it's going to be upwards, and that's going to give us a minimum point. And for our point h, we're going to find our second derivative, and the second derivative of 2x will be 2. As a conclusion for this project, we have to use all our steps that we learned during the partial in order to uh, get to a, gra a graphic and understand a certain situation uh, that can be applied to many different uh, real life events. And we're going to get the whole um, concavity and, and different variations of a function, and that's what we can use the problem for.